I have never read or watched any of Harry Potter. Like, ever. Any of it at all. Hi. So, I read the entirety of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone for the very first time yesterday, and oh my god, it is so good. Oh my- <laughs> When I was in like middle school and high school and I told people, yeah, I never got into Harry Potter. I tried reading the first book and it's a little boring. They're always like, yeah, the first one's a little bit slow. There's like no plot. It's like 200 pages of world building and 30 pages of plot. It's amazing i love that stuff i don't care about voldemort i just want to know about how they live their lives and they did literally the entire book was like you're a wizard harry time to go shopping for harry's wizard stuff oh aren't the weasley so nice we don't really like hermione just kidding we like hermione now harry's like really good at quidditch ron can play chess Hagrid has a dragon. Uh-oh. Better send it to Charlie. It's Christmas! Oh, by the way, Voldemort's back, but Ron can do chess and Hermione's really smart and Harry has this little scar thing, so they beat him. Anyways, Gryffindor wins the house cup! And that's it. That's the whole book. I have not been this excited about a form of media since the Newsies Pro Shot came out in, like... When did that happen? When did that happen? Twenty seventeen. It is um eight forty five in the morning, which is very early for me, but I wanna get through the entire second book today. So I literally woke up early. I hate waking up early. I don't wake up early for anything. And I woke up early so I could read Harry Potter. God. Okay, so I'm gonna go do it. <laughs> Bye. Oh, it smells like puke. Sorry if I look a little bit rough. Um I just violently threw up half an hour ago and I'm starting to feel a little bit nauseous again so hopefully I can get this done before anything bad happens. It's still day two. It's night now. It's 10.30 p.m. Oh my god. I just finished um, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. This series is so good. One of the things that like I really love is how much I care about all the secondary characters. I love a story with good background characters. I love it so much. Like halfway through the book, I was like, I don't care about Ginny. I don't care about Dobby. And now I'm like, okay, but I kind of like them both. I love the Weasley family so much. I love them. They deserve the best in life. I'm starting to care about Draco, which is good. Cause first book I was like, I don't, give a heck about Draco Malfoy, which is weird because I always like the villains more than the main characters, but for some reason I was just like, mm, nah, but I am starting to like him. Not in like the way that like, I feel like a lot of edgy girls like Malfoy, as in like, oh my god, he's so hot. I want to fix him. No, he's a Gosh darn mess. He never knows what's going on and I love him for it. But anyways, on to, I don't know what the next book is, but I'm gonna start tomorrow. I might not go to work because food and commercial workers, am I right? Might even finish that one in a day too. We'll see, we'll see. Bye. It is, okay. I just finished Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, it is day four. Not because I had to take two days to finish a book. I'm not weak, but because yesterday I was the most sick I've ever been. And at sometime at 3 a.m. I was so delusional that I convinced myself that I was Harry Potter. And I was like laying in bed and I was like, wait. Why are my aunt and uncle taking care of me? They hate me. And it took me like half an hour for me to realize I am not Harry Potter. <laughs> and it was my parents taking care of me. So I figured I, I maybe needed to take a break while I was ridiculously sick in bed. But this book, oh my gosh. <laughs> First of all, the plot was insane. 
They spend like the first two thirds of the book being like Sirius Black is so dangerous. He has to be in jail or dead. He's the most dangerous person that has ever existed ever. And then when they meet Sirius Black, they're like, hold up a second. But let's talk about werewolves for a minute. Why? I was a little bit like, okay, come on guys. I don't, I don't know about this. I don't know about this one. But I still really, really liked it. I love that chocolate is secure to Dementor side effects. <laughs> that they're like, what's full of happiness? Chocolate. The chapter on the Quidditch finals, Gryffindor versus Slytherin, was one of the most stressed I've been reading a book in a while. I was very, very stressed out. Oh my god. What if they don't win? What if they don't win the cup? I'm so stressed out. They gotta be 50 points up or more. They gotta win. Come on. Come on, Harry. But they won, so it's fine. What else happened? <gasps> Ron getting an owl? <laughs> It was so important to me. Oh my god. I love the Weasleys so much. The Weasleys might actually be my favorite fictional family. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Editor Anya here. No, they're not. The Curtis brothers have my heart and soul, but the Weasleys are my second favorite. Sorry to interrupt. You're doing great, bestie. I love them so much. I care about all of them so much. Even like Percy, who's like kind of a jerk. I'm so like... Yeah, you got head boy, Percy. Hell yeah. Um, so I'm so glad that Ron has an owl. So glad. But yeah, it's a really, really good book. It is starting to take over my life a little bit. I might not finish the next one in one go because I do have to work very early tomorrow. <laughs> I think it's Tuesday again. I just finished reading Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Um, and when I said that thing about not because I had to take two days to finish a book, I'm not weak. I didn't realize that all the rest of them are twice as long as the first three. So I had to relax a little bit. This one was really good. <laughs> it was really, really good. I love that Harry gave his um, thousand galleons to Fred and George. I knew it was gonna happen because um, there was a prize for the Goblet of, for the Triwizard Tournament. And also they kept making a big deal about how the Weasleys are poor. So I was like, they, he has to win, give them money. I knew about like Voldemort using the Triwizard Tournament and like the port key, da da da, because I've watched a very Potter musical. Obviously like all the details are different, but I completely forgot that Cedric died. Like that com I completely forgot about that. So many regrets. I'm dead. And I was so sad. So far Harry Potter has not been one of those series where like actually sad things happen. Just you white. Even like the, the tiniest things of like what house wins the tournament every year, like it's always Gryffindor and like they always win the Quidditch Cup. When Cedric actually died and like stayed dead, I was like, oh my god, he's dead. I was so sad. Ugh, I was so sad. So many regrets. I'm dead. Also, Snape's just like a good guy, apparently. I can't, I keep waiting for Snape to be revealed as, oh, so he actually is a bad guy, but like, no, he's just like, he's just cool, I guess. Like, he doesn't like Harry Potter, and that's like the only, it's the only thing against him, which isn't even a big thing against him. He just doesn't like him, which is fine. That's, he's allowed, he's allowed to do that. He's not evil, I guess. I really thought this was the one. I was like, this is the one. Snape's gonna be... Snape's gonna be revealed as evil in this one. But he wasn't. Snape's cool, I guess. I don't know. Something I noticed <laughs> while reading this book is um, whenever people ask me what my Hogwarts house is, I always make the joke of, oh, I'm Slytherin because I'm evil. And then like, the big Harry Potter fans jump up and they're like, no, 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 hey, but Slytherin isn't actually evil. They just, they just um, are very ambitious. They're not evil. 
The book is like really pro Slytherin being evil. Everyone made it seem like that's just like this narrative that people have put on Slytherin and it's just like, oh, Draco happens to be Slytherin, but not all Slytherins are evil. But the book really makes it seem like all Slytherins are evil. They're like, this is the evil house. Um, what did the... Oh, I'll have to find it. The Sorting Hat literally calls them shrewd Slytherin and describes them as power hungry. Like they're clearly the evil house. And yet, and yet people are still like, no, Slytherins aren't evil. They're ambitious. No guys, if you're Slytherin, you're evil. You just have to accept it. It's not very Slytherin for you to say otherwise. But then again, I feel like it's always Hufflepuffs who are saying that Slytherin are actually evil, which is on brand. But yeah, another book under the belt. Really enjoyed it. Um, the next one is Order of the Phoenix, which I might do like a check-in in the middle just because these books are longer. And also my brother said that <laughs> no one can remember what Order of the Phoenix is about. It's like the one that no one knows what the, no one can remember what the plot is about. Um, so I'm excited to see what's up with that. I'll see you there. I'm not done with Order of the Phoenix. I'm halfway through. It's day 15. I took some time off. Um, not on purpose, just because I was daydreaming about other stuff. Um, and then I saw Spider-Man, and then I was daydreaming about other other stuff. Um, the longest one that we've had so far. And, oh my god, I am so annoyed with everyone. I'm I, everyone's on my nerves. Harry's being whiny. Ron and Hermione are just arguing constantly. All the adults are being so unhelpful. Even Dumbledore is not being helpful. Even like Mrs. Weasley and Sirius are like not being helpful. <laughs> like everyone's being so annoying. Only people that I'm not mad at right now are Professor McGonagall. <laughs> Neville Longbottom and the Weasley twins. All of the B plot about um, Fred and George's store, I'm like, yes, give me more of this. I don't want to hear about Harry complaining. Also, the Slytherins are so annoying. I think like after the second or third book, I was like, okay, I kind of am beginning to like Draco. They're so annoying. They're so annoying. I just finished the, um, the Quidditch match where um, Harry and the twins get banned from playing Quidditch. And the the Slytherins are just such jerks. Oh my god! Like I don't understand why people are like. Okay, I'm sh I'm sure like later, like the last book, Draco's gonna have some sort of sad backstory that people connect to. Um, but right now, I'm like, wow, they're the worst people I've ever met in my life. I've not met. I don't know them. I understand why people don't remember what happens in this book because. <laughs> There's not a lot of plot going on. They're like, hey, the order exists. Here's 400 pages of other stuff. They're really like not doing a lot. Oh, I I loved, I loved the um, description of the rogue defense against the dark arts class that Harry is leading. So good, so good. I love that. That was like literally the first time in the book where I was like, yes, Harry, because he spent every moment up until then whining um which like fair enough he's had it rough but i'm like come on dude like stop what else has happened oh the um what is it called mimbulus mimbletonia that that is it's gonna come back it's gonna be very important to the plot like it is going to be important mark my words that is Chekhov's gun right there they keep mentioning it because I forgot about it for a little bit, but then they just mentioned it again. I mean, because it's the password for the door. But I was like, the fact that they said it again um, made me think. That's definitely Chekhov's gun. Definitely. In the arms of the angel, fly away from here. Yeah, I have no idea where this book is going. Like, whatsoever. I don't think I've ever hated a character as much as I hate Umbridge. Um, so hopefully she dies or something. That'd be great. See you when I'm done. I, again, don't know what day it is. Friday, 2 a.m. I'll add it in post what day it is. Does that mean I'm going to count it as Thursday? Because I've been up still. Just finished Order of the Phoenix. 
Um, no wonder no one can remember what this <laughs> one is about because it is weird, but I loved it. It was so good. I was very annoyed with most of the characters most of the time. Like I think I said, especially Harry. Harry was really getting on my nerves. But I did really like that scene of him just like having a meltdown in Dumbledore's office because it felt very accurate to how a 15 year old would act in that situation. They wouldn't be like, oh, whatever. Not gonna lie though, I kind of didn't care too much about Sirius dying. Like I felt, I only cared because I felt bad for Harry. I was always kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, Sirius. I never really care that much about like parent figures in media. I'm always like, give me strong sibling characters. I don't care about the parents. I was starting to like Sirius more, but then that scene from the Pensieve of them bullying Snape just really like kind of messed me up. I was like, nah, not cool with it. And then there was like no good explanation for why they did that or why they were so mean to him. They're just like, ah, we were 15 and he was mean to us too. So like, whatever. Yeah, mm, no, you're on my bad list. Um, and then he died and I was like, ah, sucks, huh? Yeah, this book was wild. Oh, oh. <laughs> Fred and George are my favorite characters, <laughs> period. My favorite part in this book was them being like, ah, I don't care about being expelled anymore. Guess we'll just cause havoc. And them setting off the fireworks. Um, and then when uh, Umbridge and Phil, Phil, Flitch, Flitch, what's his name, Filch, are like, we're gonna punish you. They're like, nah. They can't fire me. I quit. Fiends I don't fit in. Bye. <laughs> That's so funny. I love a little found family trope and that's what we got at the end. I know I literally just said I don't care about parent figures and honestly I really don't but like all of the parent figures for Harry and his friends being like you better be nice to him. I love that so much. I'm gonna start the next one tomorrow. It wasn't until I was at work that I realized last night in my enthusiasm to talk about Fred and George Weasley, I didn't even discuss my other favorite part of the book, which was that the DA members got to fight with Harry. I was so happy about it. It was so cool. Now that the possibility has been presented, I 100% believe that Neville is a chosen one. I don't care what Harry or Neville does for the rest of this series, as far as I'm concerned, Neville is the chosen one. Love that man. I started reading the first two chapters of Half-Blood Prince this morning, and I was reminded that I still hate Draco Malfoy, and I was like, okay, but apparently he's more important in this one. So we've got two books for him to stop being an annoying little twerp and to turn into... A, tr a angry boy with a tragic backstory that's relatable to teenage girls, and that's why everyone's in love with him. But we'll see. No! God, please, no! 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 I hope we do, because I love a villain. <laughs> hey, it's day... I don't know what day it is. I'll put it in post. I'm halfway through Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. I feel like I've said this literally every time, but I have no idea what's going on in this book. There's no plot. There's absolutely no plot. Like, more than the other books, there's no plot. I love some good character building. They're just living life in Hogwarts. I mean, Katie Bell has been cursed, and that's... That's about it, actually. I'm not as annoyed about- this is the least annoyed I've been about, um, romance in any form of media ever. I'm always like, I hate this, why is this here? Um, and I am a little bit like, this is unnecessary. But because the Harry Potter books are so, like, have so much to do with the characters' lives as well, like, it's not just, like, Let's solve 
the conflict here. Like, it's also, like, their lives at Hogwarts. It makes more sense that it's in there than, um, literally any other book I've read because I don't read romance. I guess they can be in love, whatever. I do want to know why does <laughs> everyone hate F Fleur? Fleur? Is that her name? Fleur? She's done nothing wrong. <laughs> She's done absolutely nothing wrong and everyone's like, screw you, Flem, you're stupid. I feel bad for her. I'll probably finish it on Monday. Today's Saturday, by the way. I'm so tired. Oh, I don't know what day it is. Today is day 22. I just finished reading Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Oh my god. First of all, someone give Harry a hug. <laughs> He is not okay. This boy needs help. He just needs someone to comfort him because he's really going through it. I know that Dumbledore is not actually dead. Um, so I feel like I would, I would, I did care. I think like the funeral was very sweet. It was very touching. I don't know how he's not dead. I only, I don't know why I know that also. Like I've watched a very Potter musical, but like I knew that Dumbledore died and then it's not dead before I watched that because it was one of the things I used to say in middle school. I was like, I don't need to read Harry Potter. I know that Harry dies and he comes back to life. Dumbledore dies and he comes back to life. And Steve's evil and Melville's evil and like whatever. But I don't know how I actually know that. Also, Dumbledore is way more dead than I originally thought. So I truly don't know where I learned that he wasn't. This is the first book that didn't have the like, um, cyclical like sitcom plot which is to say that at the first five books at the beginning he's sad because he's at the Dursley's house and then he's like oh yeah I do have friends at Hogwarts and then he goes to Hogwarts and it's all great um and then he defeats a little part of Voldemort and then at the end he's going back to the Dursley's and he's sad but he's like excited for Hogwarts next year and this is the first one that didn't have a um like a return to normalcy which is very interesting. I was shocked when he said he's not going to go back to Hogwarts next year, um, even though obviously he is, because there's another book and he goes back to Hogwarts. So um, it's gonna get over that, obviously. What else about this book? Oh, Snape is evil. Turns out, tur crazy, am I right? He is evil. I really thought that maybe he's not actually evil and he is just like, he does just hate Harry Potter, which like I said, fair enough. But no, he is evil. Just you wait! Definitely thought Half-Blood Prince was Voldemort, but it turns out it's Snape. Which was a good little twist, because I wasn't expecting that. I love that there's a room, that the room of requirement has a specific room for hiding stuff, which you would think would be individual to each person, so that other people can't find the hidden stuff. But no, <laughs> absolutely not. Anyone can find anything in the room of requirement. Why wouldn't they be able to? And I get the Malfoy thing now, okay? I get the Malfoy thing. I understand it. He's like a troubled youth who doesn't, ta who has trouble expressing his emotions and feels forced into being evil because his parents are evil and it's like this whole thing and all he needs is an outside female character to come in and tell him how to experience love. <sighs> I hate romantic fanfiction. Sorry, I'm sorry, I hate romantic fanfiction, but I'm fine. Side note, this is not a judgment of fanfiction readers or writers in general. I literally write sister fics, so I am no better. I just don't like ships. Only exception being Kid Blink and Mush, which you can learn more about from my Newsies video essay. Speaking of romance, um, I love that Fleur, Fleur, however you pronounce her name, has been accepted into the family because she's, um, She's not superficial and she still loves Bill. I think that was really sweet. And I am very excited to see their wedding in the next book. Legitimately very excited. That being said, I was kind of like, why are we talking about Lupin and Tonks? Dumbledore died like five minutes ago. <laughs> this is not, this cannot be that important right now. But I really liked it. Um, I didn't think I was gonna get done before school starts, but I have a week and only one book left. Very excited to read it. I will be feeling very, very dead inside once I'm done, but then I have the movies to watch. Um, but then once that's done, we're gonna be in a little bit of trouble.
So, better watch out for that. You better watch out, you better watch out, you better watch out, you better watch out. I'll see you halfway through Harry Potter and, I already forgot what it's called, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Which is like a two parts, it's a two part movie anyway, so it'll be perfect. Bye. Okay, I'm halfway through. God, I keep forgetting what... So, today is day 24. I'm halfway through Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Which, oh my god, there is so much to talk about. I've been so stressed out this entire book because they established from the very beginning that they will be killing people off left and right. And I'm just, I'm so concerned for everyone's safety. I mean, I know that the main three make it to the end. Like, I get that. But all of the secondary characters that I love, I'm so concerned they're going to die. When they were doing the, um the like splitting seven different Harrys off into different places I was a hundred percent convinced that someone that one of the Weasleys was gonna die a hundred percent but everyone was fine I mean George lost an ear but whatever oh my god I'm just really really stressed out I guess they're not going back to Hogwarts I was really sure that they were but I guess they're just not not. Yeah, and I think Dumbledore is more dead than I thought he was. I don't think he's 100% dead, mind you, but I think he's more dead <laughs> than I was giving him credit for. I just got to the part, um, I just finished the chapter where Ron comes back and they destroy the, the Horcrux in the necklace. And I was so stressed out when Ron wasn't there. I was like, Please, please come back. I'm really sad that Hedwig is dead. I'm really upset about that. That was really upsetting. Who else is dead? Mad-Eye Moody's dead. Um, a lot of random people are dead that we don't really know about. Yeah, I don't know how they're gonna... I don't know how they're gonna get all the Torcruxes. I'm not gonna lie. There's like not that much book left. There's like 300 something pages and they have a lot of... a lot of things to find and defeat and then defeat Voldemort. It seems like it's gonna be a really big thing. I don't know how it's gonna manage to be done. Whatever. Fred and George are my favorite characters. <laughs> Period. I was a hundred percent convinced that someone, that one of the Weasleys was gonna die. <laughs> I'm not finished yet, um, it, but I, I, Fred just died, and like I literally feel like I'm gonna throw up. Like I'm so, I'm so mad and upset and I'm like, I'm literally like shaking. Like I'm not okay. The twins are my favorite character. And I haven't, like, I like, it happens at the right end of the chapter, um, so, and I haven't read on, so, like, maybe he's not actually dead, but, like, it was, it's pretty, seems pretty, like I said earlier, they're, like, really just killing people off, no remorse, um, and it seems like he's, like, really, really dead. Yeah. I think it's gonna be one of those things where it's it's like um like the outsiders is my favorite book and I just pretend that Johnny and Dally aren't dead <laughs> and that like everything's fine. I think it's just gonna turn into one of those things where I'm like, no, everything's fine. They're going to Hogwarts still. They're not they're not dead. Okay, I'll be back with you once I finish, um, probably tonight. So bye. Today is day twenty-five. I have just finished reading the entirety of the Harry Potter series, and I feel like my life has lost all meaning. What am I supposed to do now? I don't know. I have literally so much to talk about in this book, like so much happened. First of all, I would say the first um, two thirds of this book was my least favorite of all of the books. I was like, please just go back to Hogwarts. I know why it was important. It was very important to the plot, but I was also like, I don't wanna read you being sad in the forest for another page. I'm so over it. But then the last third 
was probably my favorite of any of the books. So I think when I do eventually reread this series, before I ever reread it all over, I think I'm gonna read that last third of this book again. Cause it was really freaking good. But before we start talking about that, let's go back to where I stopped, which was halfway through the book. I was taking notes because there was a lot of stuff going on and I was feeling a lot of things. Oh my god, I have so many notes. <laughs> Luna's friend paintings? The fact that Luna has paintings of her friends in her house it just touched me so much. I love her! I was really, really not expecting to love Luna as much as I did. I kind of heard the name Luna Lovegood. I've heard like most of the characters' names and I knew she was kind of like the goofy, quirky girl and I was like, I'm not gonna like her. I love her! I love Luna! Oh my god, I love her. I cannot believe that they originally got caught because Harry's stupid ass said Voldemort. Knowing that he can't say it, he just forgot. And that was what really messed him up in the beginning. It's, my God. I forgot Dobby died, rip. I was like kind of sad, but I feel like I wasn't as sad as I was supposed to be. <laughs> Dobby was cool and I was like, ah, he died, ah, it's too bad. I think the goblin commentary was weird cause they were, I understood it up to the point where they're like, hey, like, goblin history has been really kind of messed up by wizards and, like, they're really seen as more greedy than they are and, like, wizards really did them dirty. But then, whatever his name was, the goblin that helped them, did turn out to be a greedy jerk. So I'm like, maybe they were right, I don't know. And then they never addressed it again. <laughs> they're like, man, we shouldn't be mean to goblins. Goblins are kind of mean, bye. I was so emotional about them all coming together to fight. That was like what I was feeling the entire last 100 pages of the book. It was just me being like, oh my God, they're all together and they're fighting. That started when literally like the first time um, they went into the room of requirement and like all the DA members who had been like kicked out of the school were like chilling there. I was like, I love them. And it just kept happening over and over. Percy. Percy coming back was so important to me. I didn't even know that I cared about Percy that much. Like subconsciously, I really connected to Percy because I am also like honor student teacher pet who's always making excuses for adults. And I saw myself in him. I was like, I got you, Percy. I'm so glad you're here. During like the entirety last hundred pages of this book, um, it took me so long to read them because I kept rereading paragraphs because I was like, Oh, I love them! And I also had to keep like stopping because I was so stressed out and I had to like breathe and be like, it's fine, we just gotta get through it. It was very emotional for me. Okay, I don't wanna get upset again about Fred dying, but I think the reason why I'm so upset about it is because my favorite character in books are always the like, fun, joking, secondary characters. I don't give a, a f I don't care about the main characters. I never care about the main characters. I'm always, my favorite character is always the secondary character who's making jokes and is just there for a good time but cares so much about their friends and it's so loving. And they never die. I never have to have my main character, my favorite character die because they never die. They're always there in the end. Authors never kill off that character. So I was just so shocked that Fred died. I was really expecting Percy to die. I'm not gonna lie because he just had his whole arc and it would have been so sad because like he just came back and like forgave, everyone forgave him and he's like sorry and then he dies and everyone can be like, ah, oh, God. And then Harry can have his like, oh my God, he was like so separated from the family for so long and it was my fault and all the Christmases that he missed. Percy, no, but no. It was Fred. I wasn't expecting it. And then I already had cleared Percy from all harm, but him refusing to leave Fred's body then like, again, cleared him from anything he's ever done. I'm like, you're good. You're a good man, Percy. Love you. Neville got to use his plant skills. Like, yeah, Neville. Like, yeah. Go help, I don't remember her name. Love Neville. Neville's my favorite. Not actually, it was Fred and George, but then Fred died, so. 
I guess George is my favorite. Fred was my favorite too. Is that weird? Like they're the exact same character almost. Near the uh, the second half of the series, they kind of started to be individualized as in they didn't speak in unison as much anymore. But Fred was still my favorite. I think it was because he was like first, like his friend George, not George and Fred. I don't know why, but I was like, damn, even my favorite of the twins died. So I was right. Snape isn't evil. He just doesn't like Harry Potter, which is fair enough. That's what I've been saying. It's totally fine to not like Harry Potter. That's okay. I was right. I didn't even know that. I I had no idea. Most things in this series have been spoiled for me. I did not know that Snape was actually a good guy. Well, I thought he was a good guy. Also, Colin dying? Why? I loved Colin. I feel like I never talked about this, but I loved Colin. Colin was so sweet. Like the first book that Colin was introduced and he kept annoying Harry with his pictures. I'm like, just, just let him take a picture of you, dude. Just let Colin take your picture. And now he's dead. He's freaking dead. And he'll never get another picture of Harry Potter. So mad. Charlie coming and the house elves coming to help. It was so good. So important to me. And, oh, that line where Mrs. Weasley's like, not what'd she say? She said, not my daughter, you bitch. Yes! Also such good payoff because there's no curse words in this book besides that one. It's like, fuck yeah. You earned it, Mrs. Weasley. You earned that. During the whole, like, they're all in the Great Hall and Snape and Harry, not Snape, Nope. They're all in the Great Hall and Voldemort and Harry are facing off and Harry's like explaining everything to him. I was like, come on, we don't gotta do this. Y'all just gotta, y'all just gotta start dueling. Like I cannot, <laughs> why are we talking about Snape? If I was one of those people sitting there, I was like, why the, why are we talking about Snape right now? Our literal lives are in danger. I don't care about the Horcruxes, please. But then the payoff? was so good. I was not expecting that to pay off because I was like, I already know all this stuff. Come on, get to get to the epic duel. But like learning that it was like Draco who was the rightful owner of the wand and then it being like, oh wait, you're onto something. You're onto something here. This kid, is, is it? Is Harry the owner of the... And then just having one spell being it was... Such a good payoff. It was so good. Oh my god. And then I was kind of mad that Harry named literally all his kids after dead people. I'm like, come on, dude. Albus Severus Potter is an awful name. That is a bad name. Like, it's not good. That doesn't sound good. You have to pick a name that sounds good together. You can't just name your child after dead people. It's not, it's not how it works, man. So I have a lot of things to say. Just about the series in general. Just like, I've read the entire series now. I have not watched the movies yet. That's what I'm doing next. These are things that I wrote down at random times while reading these books. And um, I'll, I'm not gonna mention the ones I think will be answered by the movies, which are a couple of them. First of all, do they have strip clubs in the wizarding world? And if they do, do they throw coins at people? Or do you have to like, walk up to the stage in front of everyone while the stripper's doing their thing and like politely place your coin on the ground because that's embarrassing and I would not be able to do that. Absolutely not. Why is Peeves still allowed in the school? Like I know, I, I originally was like, oh, they can't get rid of him because like magic and whatever. But then multiple times people keep being like, well, if I was in charge, Peeves wouldn't be here still. So they can get rid of Peeves. And like, is Dumbledore cool with Peeves? Cause Peeves, I mean, I guess Peeves turned out to be cool in the end, right? Like he helped Fred and George when they were like, screw you Umbridge. And at the end he's like helping the Hogwarts students. So like, he's cool overall, but still why is he allowed to be in the school? Because they didn't know he was gonna help Voldemort. Like they didn't know Voldemort was happening. He's just been there causing trouble. That's all I'd like to say. So they have like no muggle technology and that sounds awful. You know, I feel like I'm gonna talk about this more um, after I watch the movies, but like they don't listen to any muggle music. They don't have any muggle books. They don't even know what skiing is. 
Do they just like sit around in their house all day and play like chess and read magic books? Like, I just, I feel like there's like not a ton to do except just sitting around and like magicking all day. I don't know, I like stuff like skiing and, and bowling and, you know, they have plays. They have wizard plays. They have concerts. Oh, that's another thing. I was like, if they don't have electricity, then stuff like the drum machine was never invented. Which, <laughs> I'm not saying the drum machine was like the most important thing that's ever happened in musical history, but like, you know, it was, it create like, electronic music is like more than just dubstep, you know? Like, there's a lot of music that's created by using, like, beats and stuff. So they just don't have hip hop, right? Like, they just have classical music and like, radio shows. Like it's the 20s? I don't know, it seems kind of boring to me. To me personally, it seems a little bit boring. They also have one sport? They only play Quidditch? <laughs> it's either um, Dean or Seamus, I don't remember which one, who like really likes soccer, and Ron's like, this is stupid. It's like, no. Like, If I was in a, from a wizarding family and I'd only ever seen Quidditch in my entire life, and then I saw a soccer game, I'd be like, this is cool as heck. They're just like running around after a ball. It's cool. I don't know, I'm like, just Quidditch? Y'all just got Quidditch? Nah, man. Mm-mm. Like, imagine... <laughs> imagine, like, the American um, wizarding school, like, teaches their kids muggle sports, and then they have, like, a championship versus Hogwarts, and the Hogwarts kids are just awful because they have no actual, like, sports skills, except, like, the people, like, hitting the... Is it the quaffles? The, the, the bludgeoners. Is that what they're called? No, the beaters. The beaters have, like, I mean, they have, they can, they have hand-eye coordination and, like, a, a good arm, but, like, they would not be able to play football <laughs> or dodgeball. They would be awful at that. <laughs> Just kidding, retcons a lot in this series. Like, and then plays it off as in like, oh yeah, this has always been a thing. It's just Harry that doesn't know about it. We all knew about it, but Harry doesn't know what's going on. That's a, that's him. There's so much animal abuse in the wizarding world. Which I feel like no one's talking about that. Like how they'd really just, they really just be like turning mice into nothing. They just will vanish a mice and be like, ah. Sorry, it's gone forever. Turning like snails into other objects. I don't remember all the things they did in Transfiguration, but they were kind of, it's kind of messed up, you know? Kind of not cool. Could you use magic like Reparo to like Frankenstein things together and create like Sid from Toy Story monsters, but they're alive? Could you do that? Like, I know you can't make things alive, but if you had things that were alive, could you splice them together to create monster breeds? And then it wouldn't it wouldn't get in the what the law of magical um being experiments breeding experiments. Because you're not breeding them, you're just Reparo. Now you have a owl lion. I don't know. So the wizards don't learn stuff like that were important in like muggle history, right? Because I know they have a muggle class, but it seems like from what Hermione was talking about that that's more like learning about stuff like electricity and like day-to-day -day muggle things, but like they didn't w learn about like World War II, huh? Like they just, that wasn't important to them. When 9-11 happened, which I know it hasn't happened yet because of the 90s, they're not gonna talk about that. They don't know about Vietnam, World War One. Don't know nothing. Do they know that the like British were like colonizers? Do they know that? Like I'm sure like the muggles, the muggle race people do, but do like the wizarding family know about like racism? Shut up mouth boy, your parents are just wizard Nazis. What do you mean you don't know what a Nazi is? What, did the wizarding world not learn about the Holocaust? What do you mean it was a muggle thing? Are you telling me there's no Jewish wizards? Okay, that's all I have to say about the book series. I've been talking for quite a bit. This is the most excited I've been reading something in a very long time. My eyes kept doing that thing where I would get too excited and want to read faster than I can and I would start like skipping down this page before I finished reading paragraphs. And I'd have to be like, no, 
take a breath. You have to actually read the book. You can't just keep skipping. It was very, very exciting. And I'm very, very excited to watch the movies. Once that happens, my life will be over. I have to go to work. But then tonight I'm gonna watch Harry Potter and I don't remember what the first one is. Sorcerer's Stone, no. Yes it is, Sorcerer's Stone. So I'll see you then. Bye. I literally turned off my camera and I'm recording this afterwards. I was expecting to like Draco a lot more. Like I kind of get it. Like he's not super evil anymore. He was kind of like roped into it and it was kind of, it was like a whole mess. But I I don't know. I was like really I had high hopes cuz I love villains. After the fun comedic secondary character, the villain is always my favorite character. I love a good villain, but I hated Voldemort and I was expecting to really like Draco cuz everyone wants it's like in love with Draco, I guess. Um. Should I walk out the door, drag my feet along the floor? Then I see you, you walk across the campus, cool professor studying romances. How am I supposed to but I was like a little disappointed. I was like, come on, dude, you didn't do anything cool. You didn't even like really help in the end. Come on, man. If only he had a sister, maybe that would solve the problem. <laughs> maybe I would like him more if he had a sister. Maybe after watching the movies, I'll like him more. So I'll check back in about that at the end. So I'll see you then. Bye. <laughs> oh my God. I didn't drink water the entire time. <laughs> <laughs>